made it. We are back. This is the second of three reunions for Vanderpump Rules. If you're new here, you don't know me. My name is David Colarossi. I'm a licensed psychologist. And for fun, I react to shows like Vanderpump Rules. I'm actually, I, I have mixed feelings here. I don't know if there's enough to say for two more reunions, but, but we will see. I'm interested. The LA Times published a bombshell article about Randall that accused him of running a casting couch, having his assistants move drugs, and Randall denied all the allegations through a spokesperson. Who, by the way, was also Harvey Weinstein's spokesperson. Wait, is that, I mean, aside from Vanderpump, is that right? Like, can you imagine if you're Randall, that's the spokesperson you select? And even if, you, if you're that spokesperson, like, don't you go like, hey, I need to improve my image, let me choose somebody other than Ramble, R than Randall, whatever his name is. I mean, did you feel like you had to sleep with him in exchange for getting the part? You know what, I actually did not. I didn't realize that like Hollywood worked that way. Come on, she knew, exa she knew exactly, how does she not know, if she didn't know what she was doing, then why did she let him hit it the first night? I let him hit it the first night and we were inseparable. Of course she knew. But if she acknowledges it, then she acknowledges that she's trading sex for roles, and that looks bad for her, right? So she has to act like she had no idea. But give me a break. And they're making you out to be, and me to be, I basically know. like pathological liars. I see that, yeah. Even though we know that we're not. Yeah. And we haven't lied about anything besides this affair. Yeah. Besides the gargantuan affair, we've been super honest. Straight as an arrow. You guys, but this is, now real life is sunken. The two of them together, he's gonna be off doing his thing. Oh. He's always been doing I promise you, they will not stay together. Lala is right. Past behavior is the biggest predictor of future behavior. The chances that Tom is able to stay faithful to Raquel is zero. And the chances that Raquel stays interested in him after all of this drama dies away, after all of the energy and attention from this affair dies down, no way. I don't love the way it's coming across about your guys' intimacy. Like, just watching what you guys taped right now, it looks like you guys had, like, this solid relationship. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Raquel was under the impression that Tom had discontinued his relationship and it was totally faithful to her. And now she's finding out that he was still sleeping with the person that he had been with for the last nine years. So not smart on her part, but you have to admit that does change the dynamic a little bit as far as who's maneuvering and manipulating who, right? It, clearly, he was lying to both women. I mean, Ariana always like kind of talked down to me a little bit, like, just something simple like, oh, uh, what should I wear tonight? I think I'm gonna do an outfit change. I'm either gonna start off with this one or uh -huh. I'm gonna start off with this one. I don't like the green. This is the, the dumbest conversation. She's saying to him, were you still having a relationship with her, a sexual relationship? And his answer is, well, like kinda, but I didn't like it when she told me she didn't like my sequined green pants. That conversation, it made no sense, right? I'm not, am I missing it? That, that did not, that was not a, maybe they edited it, but that made, that was not a cohesive discussion. I keep trying to figure out like what, what about him bothers me, you know, beyond the lying and the narcissism and that kind of stuff. What bothers me about him is he's like an adult emo kid. It's age appropriate when you're in high school. This guy's 40. You have this 40 year old adolescent just. <laughs> hey, can we like have a, uh, can we can we have like a for real break where we're not like being filmed? You can have a break. You, we, ha we have food standing by ready for you. All of them as they're eating lunch, they're filming that. You know <laughs> what I mean? No, man. I do like him trying to get some time. They're like, oh, you can have a break, no big deal. And then you see this woman with the big boom mic. <laughs> James seemed very easily triggered by Raquel multiple times this season. Did you ever think he wasn't over her? I honestly never thought that once. Okay. Um, but I think James gets easily triggered by a lot of things, <laughs> and I think he really did. <laughs> I think he does also. I guess I should say here, in, in the last video I posted, I said James's outrage is recreational. I said I think he is as deep as a puddle. And people in my comments got upset going, no, no, you don't know the whole story. There's nuance there. His parents are alcoholics. It's a, he has a horrific background. And I just want to say, I, I think the two are true. I think what you are seeing here, his reaction, his, his supposed outrage towards the two of them, 
I think is fake. I think it is because he wants to be the popular guy in the show. He wants the attention. I think it's very superficial. But certainly for him and for anybody else, our psychological positions are super complicated. James wants the attention. James, James is approaching the world the way that he does because of a very complicated, nuanced background. Do you worry that his continued drinking will become an issue in your relationship? Not at the moment. I definitely... Yes, it will. I will just... I'm just... You heard it here first. And I'm sure you will hear it everywhere. Absolutely. It will become... It will continue to be a problem. Honestly, we, like, help each other. I'm not drinking as much right now, and neither is he. Oh, God. Oh, she's... She's so codependent. Okay, hold on. First of all, if somebody has a drinking problem and does nothing to resolve that problem, they continue to have a drinking problem. I don't quite have the full story, but I believe he acknowledged alcoholism in the past, and then he just sort of goes, you know what, I'm gonna drink again and try and control it. I'm just gonna white knuckle it. The chances of that working are near zero. That's the first thing. And the second thing is this poor woman who is, like it feels to me like she is covering for him, right? Is it gonna to continue to be a problem? No, no, no. I think it's gonna get better because I am going to stop drinking. I'm reducing my consumption of alcohol to help him reduce his consumption of alcohol. And whenever he has an outburst, I will be super tolerant of that because you know, he's triggered by lots of things. This is, this. if I were her therapist, I would be wringing my hands. This would be, this just looks like a disaster waiting to happen. You mustache prick. Hey, just for the ass bitch. Okay. Yeah, oh, right. no, no, no. oh my God, they look. No, no, excuse Hold on, me. come back. Okay. You fucking mustache worm I think that James is running away because he doesn't want to deal with the alcohol piece. I really don't mean to just be talking shit about James. If you play that clip back, while he is calling him a mustached bitch or prick or whatever, he's saying it to him, and he's already looking at the door. He knows he's gonna exit. He wants to get it out, and then he wants to exit the conversation. Did you ever feel like telling Lala or Raquel to stay out of your relationship? <laughs> Why is Lala getting so emotional? I want no, to no, know. No, 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 Yeah, no, no, it's okay. I, you know what? This is the side of you I love. I don't want to always see the angry side. I do think it's good for Lala to show something other than anger, right? Like, I, she's clearly, hurt by Randall and then clearly expressing that hurt most of the time by screaming at everybody. But when she was maneuvering physically with Randall, I think she felt like she was in power and getting something. And I think she's looking at Allie and seeing this woman who comes across as very demure, very naive, and certainly the sort of the second fiddle to James who is super dominant. And I think she's looking at that and saying, hey, take up more space. And quite honestly, I think it's really good advice. <laughs> this has like really, really taken its out. toll on her. Just like I even though like, she. Well, I totally get it. What's what's? <laughs> First of all, the the betrayal of two of my best friends. I have not been able to be completely present for my daughters of all this legal sh that I'm dealing with. I understand. I mean, look, everybody deals with their emotions differently. I'm having a hard time not feeling like this is overblown. Like the. Again, the level of emotion about this, like it wasn't, I guess I just don't understand. Maybe in the comments you let me know, but I don't understand why she's this upset because two of her friends had an affair. Like it wasn't with her husband. It doesn't affect her life directly. Maybe I lack empathy, but I just, it feels like a lot to me. Tom said to me that he felt like maybe she didn't want to know. Was that something that the two of you were telling yourselves? It's, maybe she knows, but she's in denial about this somehow? It seemed that way. It seemed that way. She never pressed about it. She never confronted me about it. That kind of sounds like you're blaming her. It sounds a lot like she's blaming her. It's a weird stance that both her and Tom are taking, which is like she didn't want to know and she didn't investigate, so like, so we kept f***ing. Next week, it's part three of the Vanderpump Rules reunion. That's it, we don't get to see Raquel? Thank you for listening. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, subscribe, it's super important for the YouTube algorithm. Oh, and I have merch, sweatshirts that say, I lost my mojo, so f my friend. If you like that, please 
check the uh, link below. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you next week.